Would you make welcome tonight from Ormond Beach, Florida, right here to this tabernacle on North Dixie Drive, Apostle Jim Rayleigh. Come on, make him welcome tonight. Hey, buddy. Come on, y'all. Let's give that hand to Jesus tonight. Now, now listen, you were clapping that good for me, but now you're clapping for a king. I said, now you're welcoming a king. Listen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to praise the Lord according to his reputation. Now, the reputation says what he's already done, and a reputation says what he's able to do. I dare you right now to go ahead and praise God according to his reputation. Come on, how's his reputation in your house? How's his reputation in your life? Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, I feel that head rocking, sin killing, cancer rebuking, crack delivering, child saving, anointing in this house. Lift him up. I dare, I dare you to get your neighbor by the hand and holler at your neighbor. Just grab him by the hand. If their hair falls off, if it's good hair, put it in your purse and take it home with you. Come on. But holler at your neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, say this whole row is breaking through tonight. Yeah, yeah, this whole row is breaking through. I don't know about the row behind me. I can't tell you about the row in front of me. But this row right here is going in to victory and power and a new season. My, 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 my. Whew. I love you guys. It's so good to be back. How many of y'all love Jesus in this house? Well, you ought to love him because he gave you the best pastors in the universe. Pastor Todd, you know how much I love you and Jill. You guys are family to me, and I love your kids, and I'm just so proud to be here. Now, I wouldn't be nowhere else. You are one of the greatest men I've ever known. You love your family. You live what you preach. You walk the walk. You talk the talk. I'm honored to be here tonight, and you are a man of power. You're a preaching man. You're a praying man. You're a binding the devil man. You walk with healing and power. How many of y'all glad to have a pastor just like that? I celebrate you. And then you got a beautiful wife. You outdid yourself. Hey, have y'all ever seen my wife? My wife is fine, y'all. She's, I bring you greetings from my wife, my girlfriend, and my woman on the side. Come on. She's like the Lord. She's three in one. Can I get a witness in this house? We've been married 34 years. We, listen, in 34 years, we ain't even never talked about divorce. Now, now, murder, several times, but we ain't talked about divorce. I'll tell you that. Well, who's ready for the word tonight? Well, I better ask you again. I said, who's ready for the word in this room? I'd like for you to stand if you're able for the reading of God's Word. That's my custom. I'm warning you, I feel like preaching. Come on, I left 80 degrees and came to 29 degrees. I feel like preaching. There, there is something that's going to happen in this room in the next few minutes, I believe, that is going to be unforgettable. There is a season-shifting anointing in the house. Somebody's about to walk out with what you didn't walk in with, something fresh. Somebody make a little noise if you're ready for something fresh in the room. I came in, to be quite transparent with you, I came in and was going to preach something else, but when I walked in the room, I felt such the anointing of the Holy Spirit that God turned me on a dime. So tonight's going to be powerful. I'm so ready. <laughs> I already feel the anointing. John 18, 36, I'm just going to read two scriptures in the beginning. It says, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would not fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Jesus said here essentially that the world has a lot of questions, but the answers that I produce are not from this world. He says, I have answers from another world. How many of you are glad to serve a Jesus that has answers from another world? 
Come on, healing from another world. Provision from another world. Power from another world. And then we come to Ezra, uh, Ezekiel 28, 14. It says in Ezekiel 28, 14, you were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. Somebody say established. It said you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stone. Note three words in the center of the text. He said, I established you. The word established is actually the Greek word or the Hebrew word Nathan. It literally means I've given you permission. It says I gave you permission. I dare you to look at your neighbor, look them right in the eye. If they want to look you in the eye, then look them in the ear hole. Come on. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, say, I don't know about you. But I'm convinced about myself. I have permission. Yeah, I'm not waiting for it. I'm not looking for it. I'm not asking for it. I'm not begging for it. I have permission. I have permission to bind demons and devils. I have permission to speak to cancer. I have permission to overcome the enemy. I I have permission to prosper. I have permission for joy. Is there anybody here in Ohio, you got permission. If you got permission, lift up a shout right now of praise. Y'all, we about to go somewhere. Slip up your hands. Lord, thank you that your glory is in this room tonight. Thank you that we have permission. Thank you that the devil doesn't have power. We have power because you've given it to us. I pray tonight that you would release such an anointing in this house that people will walk out with a brand new touch of God. And I thank you that you are going to manifest all you have on the agenda in this room and online. Well, before you sit down, somebody give the Lord the ovation of the night. Come on. Come on, you feel like shouting one time, lift up a shout. Before you sit down, push somebody and tell them, I have permission. I have permission. So if I get a little excited tonight, don't judge me too harshly. I have permission. If I, if I shout a little bit, don't say nothing to me, I have permission. Because I'm in one of them shouting churches. I'm in one of them Holy Ghost filled churches. I'm in one of them praising churches. I love coming here because I'm in one of them radical churches. Hallelujah. Man, I've been in churches so dead I smelled the embalming fluid when I came through the door. But I'm glad I'm not in a dead church tonight. I'm glad to be where the Spirit of the Lord is. Yeah. I'm going to get on my message, but I was telling Pastor, I, I've been at my church. This was our 25th anniversary that we just celebrated, and he, Pastor just celebrated his 30th. He's a lot older than me, but anyway, I was so blessed to think that here we are. I'm 25 years in at my church, a pastor and, and, and your sweet pastor's wife for 30 years in, and look what the Lord is still doing around here, man. I've been coming here for years. And you guys look better, you're more anointed, you got more people, you're doing more for Jesus than you've ever done. You ought to give God praise for that. That's exciting to me. Hallelujah. And, and I believe, Pastor, you're always pushing, but tonight I believe I'm here to help you push. I want to take for a, a sermon title tonight, I have permission. Tell somebody next to you, you have permission. I want you to understand something about God's church on planet earth. God's, God's church is not going down. It's going up. God's church is not getting weaker. It's getting stronger. God's church is not dying. Come on, somebody. But God's church is living. God's church is not afraid. But God's church is powerful. And one of the things that I love most to teach about, talk about, and write about is the anointing. And over the last season, 
I've been doing a lot of studying and writing and preaching and ministering on the anointing. And the anointing is something that most of us have heard about our entire lives. But I really want to dive into the anointing and talk about it from different perspectives tonight. Because in the English language, we only have one word for that word anoint. But if you look at the Hebrew and Greek of the Bible, there are over a dozen different words to describe the word anoint. Anoint in the Hebrew and in the Greek, it's like a diamond that has many facets on it. Every time you turn it in the light, you see something more beautiful there. But just simplic in, in a simplistic way, the anointing is this. It's God's endowment and it's God's endorsement. When God would choose to anoint somebody in the Old Testament, it was his public endorsement of their ministry and their call. It was God's way of saying, I've chosen them. And then the endowment came when the Lord says, not only have I chosen them, I've empowered them. When David was anointed, y'all, he was anointed with a hen of the anointing oil. That's anywhere from six to nine quarts. How many of y'all know David just didn't get an oil change? He got an oil change and a lube job. Can I get a witness? But in the end, David's anointing was public. It was God's way of saying, I'm taking him off of the shepherd's field. I'm taking him from obscurity to notoriety. I'm going to publicly bless him and everybody's going to see it. They'll know that it's me. They'll know that I did it. Is there anybody in the room that would like to get something so intense in your life that when it manifests, you go public with it? Can I get a witness? I want something I can go public with. I want something that works outside of this building. I want something that when I walk into work, I carry it with me. When I walk into the hospital, I carry it with me. When I walk into trouble, I carry it with me. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for that kind of anointing in my life, that public anointing. But it also represents God's endowment. What does that mean, apostle? That means anything God calls you to do. When he anoints you, you have the power to get it done. Come on, y'all. David got anointed in chapter 16. He got in a fight with Goliath in chapter 17. But before he ever got the appointment, he already had the anointment. Before he ever got on the battlefield, he had already received what he needed to be able to conquer the giant. I'm going to tell you something the devil don't want you to know. Before you ever get in the battle, when you are anointed, you've already got what you need to win it when you walk in. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so the word anointed is a powerful word. That's why David said in Psalms 92 10, I have been anointed with fresh oil. Somebody say fresh oil. If you study David's life, there were periodic times in his life when he received fresh oil anointings. The initial one was by the prophet when the prophet Samuel anointed him. But there were other times in his life when fresh oil came his direction. You see, the issue is some of y'all have been trying to fight today's battle with yesterday's oil. You've been trying to get today's victory with yesterday's oil. But I got off the plane tonight. I walked down the, the runway or whatever it was I walked down. But baby, when I walked in the room, I got some fresh oil with me tonight. And I'm ready to release something fresh in the house. How many of you are ready for fresh oil? See, see, the thing about oil is this. I grew up in the old church where we kept the communion table right in front. And it had a flower on it. All y'all ain't 12. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. 
and you had to change that flower out every couple of weeks, and the anointing oil that was there had been there a long time since shortly after the crust of the earth cooled. Come on, somebody. It, it was never changed. And, and you know, nowadays when they anoint you with oil, real often the oil they use nowadays smells like myrrh and frankincense. Back then, it was just oil. Country folks say it was Earl. Come on, somebody. And that oil, when you, they put it on you, it stunk so bad. Because when they touched it, you would smell of it. Where are the real folk at? And you were thinking, don't put too much of that oil off me. That is the stinking and stuff. And I found something out. The reason that it stank is because if you don't use oil, oil actually goes rancid. Oil actually goes bad. And I'm afraid that in a lot of churches, we got people walking around with oil that is so old that nothing fresh. But tonight, there is an oil that's going to drop straight out of heaven. It is a fresh oil anointing. If you want that, give the Lord a shout right now. That's what I'm after. I want something fresh. Uh, listen, I've been, I've been preaching 37 years, but I still want something fresh. I want to stand up in fresh oil. I want to preach in fresh oil. I want to lay hands on the sick with fresh oil. I want to bind the devil with fresh oil. I want to fight every battle with fresh oil. So I'm just going to unpack this thing. David said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Now, the first Hebrew word for anoint is belial. Now we're going to go deep. How many of y'all want to go deep with me? Old apostle, don't go too deep now. Don't get in the deep end. Oh, don't get Don't talk too much about that anointing. You get in the deep end. Ain't it something? How most churches are guarding the deep end but they got the shallow end wide open and 90% of the church sits in the shallow end. But I'm telling you, I want to get in the deep end. Healing is in the deep end. Breakthrough is in the deep end. A new season is in the deep end. How many of y'all want to get in the deep end with me tonight? One, two, three, give God a shout if you want to get in the deep end. So I'm going to unpack this thing, and then we're going to see what the Holy Ghost does. The first word for anoint is the Belil anointing. It's the root word, from the root word, or the Hebrew word Belil, it means the flooding anointing. It means the overflowing anointing. It means the anointing of abundance. Just plain talk. Any, any, anybody like plain talk? Now, I'm from L.A. You know where that is? That's lower Alabama. Can I get a witness? Just, just plain talk. It's the more than enough anointing. It's the anointing that takes you from lack and into abundance. The Belil anointing is the anointing for abundance. It's the anointing for more than enough. Let me tell you something tonight, precious. Struggling is overrated. Maybe you're here tonight, you're, oh, apostle, I just believe I'm supposed to struggle. I believe I'm supposed to be broke, busted, and disgusted. I believe I'm supposed to just barely get by. The devil is a liar. God can provide more than enough. His name is El Shaddai. He's not the God of just enough. He's not the God of not enough. He's the God of more than enough. Is there anybody ready for more than enough joy? More than enough peace. More than enough power. Y'all just sit there if you want to. How about more than enough resources? More than enough resources. Give God a shout if you're ready for the more than enough anointing. I, I need that. 
I said, I need that. When the devil comes in, I want to have more than enough anointing to bind that joker and put him in his place. Come on. Now, that's the first. The next word for anoint is the dashing anointing. It literally means this. It means to be fat. It's the anointing that makes you fat. I have walked in that anointing most of my life. Can I get a witness in here? It's the anointing that makes you especially satisfied. If we were going to simplify the definition, it would be the peace-releasing anointing. It's the anointing that causes you to say, by anxiety. It's the anointing that causes you to say, I'm not going to stress out. I'm not going to be full of worry. I'm not going to be full of worry and anxiety because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm not going to be full of anxiety because he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's Isaiah's Prince of Peace. He's Isaac's Ram. He's Job's Redeemer. He's the Lily of the Valley. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's the captain of the host. He's the savior. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the provider. He's the baptizer. He's the ancient of day. And that's the anointing that I carry. It, it is literally the anointing that brings you peace. Watch this. It's the anointing that makes you fat in the spirit. I wish they had an anointing that made you skinny in the flesh. Come on, somebody. But the Bible said, in that day, the yoke will be destroyed. And the burden will be lifted off of his neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. What it literally means is this. It means that the cow or the oxen will get so fat that what used to fit on him don't fit on him anymore. And the yoke is broken because he outgrew it. Is there anybody here tonight that could say, Apostle, I'm right there. There are some things that used to fit on me that don't fit on me anymore because the anointing helped me break it. Did he break off fear? Did he break off addiction? Did he break off anxiety? But watch this, precious. It's the anointing that causes you to grow but it's also the anointing that makes you especially satisfied. Now, don't confuse being satisfied for settling. Help me preach somebody. There's a difference between being satisfied and settling. I don't know about you, I'm not settling. If God promised me my children, I'm getting all three of them. Saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. If God promised me revival, I'm walking in it. If God promised me V-I-C-T-O-R-Y, if he promised me victory, victory is mine. But what does it mean to be satisfied? Being satisfied is this. It's learning how to praise God for what you got on the way to what you want. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I said it's praising God for what you got on the way to what you want. Some of y'all say, well, I'm going to praise the Lord when he does this and I'm going to praise the Lord when he does that, and I'm going to praise the Lord when he shifts this, and I'm going to praise the Lord when he shifts that. But God said, you ain't even praised me for what I've already done. 
So since you ain't praised me for what I've already done, why should I do the next thing for you? See, sometimes you got to learn to praise God for the partial. Y'all, do you realize that when David was crowned king, it was 15 years between his anointment and his appointment for the crown, but he was crowned king of Judah first. And then several years later, he was crowned king of all Israel. But you know what Judah means? Judah means praise. And the Lord said, I'm going to make you king of praise before I make you king of anything else. He said, I'm going to make you praise me for what I've already done before I bring you into everything that I'm about to do. And if somebody in this house would go ahead and praise him for what he's already done, he'll open up the next thing for you. Look at your neighbor and say, give me some of my monitor right here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Holler at him and say, you can sit there if you want to. But I need 30 seconds to give God praise for what he's already done in my life. Come on, pastor. The last 30 years have been good. Let's praise him over the last 30 years. Let's praise him for every mountain that he brought us over. One, two, three, give him a shout. No, I'm trying to stay on my text. I could run around the building tonight. See, I love to be in a house that knows how to praise God. I'm so tired of churches who won't praise the Lord. You go into some churches, it's dead. They don't praise God. We don't praise God. Praise ain't deep. The devil is a liar. You get in some churches and you try to praise the Lord, they look at you like you lost your mind. But let me tell you what praise does. I love to worship. I love every part of the process. I love to enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. I love to bless his name to Barack, to kneel, to worship, to cry. But let me tell you, there's something about praising God. Even when you ain't got everything you want, there's something about praising God. Because let me tell you something. You can read your Bible and still feel heavy. You can sing and still feel heavy. You can worship and still feel heavy. You can even pray and still feel heavy. But when you begin to praise the Lord and you put on a garment of praise, heaviness has to get off of you. Hey, hallelujah. Something is released in your life that gives you victory. Somebody praise him right now. Hallelujah. So I declare that tonight God would unlock the Belial anointing. That's the more than enough anointing. Anybody want it? How about on this side? I said, y'all want it? How about over here? Y'all want it? Oh, my Lord, I think they wanted it worse. I said, y'all want it? How about y'all? Y'all want it? Somebody give God praise if you're ready to walk in more than enough. Let me tell you, I don't care what the economy does. I don't care what the economy. Listen, the economy is not my source. Jehovah Jireh is my source. So there's the Belil anointing, be seated, precious. Then the dashing anointing. That anointing delivers me from anxiety, helps me to be satisfied, gives me peace. But then, there's another word for anointing. In the Hebrew, it's called the Yitshar anointing. It's the oil that makes new and causes the face to shine. It literally changes the countenance of a person. Just plain talk. It's the new season anointing. I wonder if there's anybody here ready for a brand new season. Yeah. 
I know it's been 30 years. I know God has been good. But, uh, but pastor, I'm here to blow the trumpet in Zion and announce that this house is stepping into a brand new season. More power than you've ever known. More resources than you've ever known. More influence than you've never ever known. More Holy Ghost than you've ever known. Somebody give God a shout if you're ready for a new season. I mean, my God. If you don't want it, I want it. Is there anybody tired of all 2020? All that COVID drama. All the mess we've been through. All the drama we've been through. Anybody tired of that old drama feel barely surviving, barely getting by season full of anxiety, worry, and frustration? Is there anybody here ready for a brand new season? I feel something in my spirit. Some of y'all say, well, Pastor, it's been tough. Apostle, it's been tough. I just heard the Lord say it was a season. It was not a sentence. That season has shut. God is opening up a brand new season. The problem is too many people are transfixed on where they've been that they forgot that God is the God of right now and he is opening up a brand new season. If you're ready for a new season, give him a praise in the house right now. You know what? I'm ready for it. I'm, anybody tired of drama? You got anybody? It's, you, you, it's, uh, how many of y'all going to say no to drama the rest of this year going into 2023? And don't, just, don't just say no to drama. Say no to OPD. You know what that is? That's other people drama. That's a drama you didn't even get to produce. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody here that's made up in your mind and you'll tell your friend, your neighbor, even your own family, you can stay in that tired, old, broke down, mad, offended season if you want to, but I am busting a move and I am stepping, I am walking in, I'm running into my new season. So, so 30 years in, I'm here to make the announcement New season, new season, new season, new season. I said new season with more than enough in Jesus' name. So, we learned tonight about the Belial anointing. That's the overflowing and abundant anointing. We're, we're learning tonight about the dashing anointing. The anointing that makes us fat in the Holy Ghost. The anointing that makes us satisfied. Then the Yitshar anointing. It's the oil that releases a new season. But then there is the Mashiach anointing. The Mashiach anointing is the very anointing of the Messiah. It's the anointing that Jesus walked in. I would call it the more like Jesus anointing. Some of y'all say, well, apostle, I don't believe that we can walk in that anointing that Jesus walked in. Well, then your theology is way off because 39 times in the Old Testament, the word Mashiach appears twice as the actual word Messiah. And it revolves around people like David, people like Saul, people like Abraham, people like Moses. It was men on the earth. It was people on the earth who rose out of their limitations and walked in the anointing of the Messiah. I am coming to tell you that there is a church that is arising in the earth and they are going to walk in the anointing of their Savior, Jesus Christ. It is the anointing in Isaiah 61 that preaches hope to the poor. It heals the brokenhearted. It sets the captive free. It comforts those who mourn. And it rebuilds down broken generation. And it releases double. Is there anybody that wants to walk in the anointing of Jesus? 
Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Say you can sit there if you want to. But I got to give God praise for the Messiah's anointing that's over my life. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out devils. That's the Messiah's anointing. So I want all that. I said, I want all that. I said, I want all that. 39 times we see the word Mashiach revolving around men. 39 times. How many stripes did Jesus have? 39. With his what? Stripes, we are healed. I'm telling you, there's healing in that Messiah's anointing. Am I in a church that still believes in healing? Am I in a church that still believes in deliverance? Come on, somebody. Just two weeks ago, I was in the back of our church. We've been doing homeless ministry for 25 years. And, and that Sunday morning, there was a lady that came to me and she said, I came to your church three years ago. I was strung out on drugs and I lost everything. And I came forward. The Sunday morning, you gave the altar call. She said, I was high when I came into the building. She said, that very day, something hit me I never felt before in my life. She said, that was three years ago. She said, I got my house back, my kids back, my family back, everything. That I'm trying to tell you that's the Messiah's anointing at work. Two weeks ago on a Sunday night, we did a baptismal service. There was a lady that got baptized. Oh, y'all help me. She came up. She went down and came up. I didn't know her testimony. She stumbled up into our church one Sunday. She had been born and raised a Muslim. Generations of being a Muslim. But when she walked in the room, something got a hold of her. And now she is a tongue talking, saved and sanctified. I'm trying to tell you about a Messiah's anointing. If you want it, holler and give God praise. Can I tell you one more? There was a girl. Our, our, we, have a, we have a group that goes on outreach. And they go into the strip clubs. And it's only women. But they go back there and they minister to these girls. And most of those girls are strung out on drugs. Because they have to be high to do what they do. They say they can't do it if they're not high. That's how hard it is. Well, some of them girls have started coming to Calvary. The girl said, I was a stripper. Y'all ain't saying nothing. She got baptized. And now she is absolutely saved and on her way to heaven. I am declaring that there is a church that is going to rise in the earth with the anointing of the Messiah. Somebody give God praise if you want to be a part of that church. Now, that's the appetizer. We've had the salad. Now let's set the salad aside. Who's ready for the main course? I said, who's ready for the main course? Everything I've been preaching, it's just been getting us warmed up for where I really want to go. Somebody give God praise in advance for what he's about to say over your life. Oh, I thank you. God, I, th I thank you. I thank you that when I came in this room, I had another message sitting in my tablet that I was going to preach but God said, no, I want to release something in that house from another world. Is there anybody ready to receive something from another world tonight? Thank you, Lord. So, our point passage. We're about to go deep now. 
Who wants to jump in deep? Put your arm floaties on. Come on. Let's jump in. Ezekiel 28, 14. This was my point passage. This is where I started. Come on, y'all. So we're going to transliterate some words here. I'm smarter than y'all think I am. I got my PhD, my Pentecostal hairdo. Can I get a witness up in here? Here it goes. We're going to unpack this verse. You were the anointed cherub who covers. He said, I established you. It's the word Nathan, like the name Nathan. He said, I gave you permission. You were on the holy mountain of God. The Hebrew word Nathan means I gave you permission. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. Now, this incredible passage of Scripture here in Ezekiel describes historically the downfall of the king of Tyre. But there's more going on here. Bible scholars and theologians tell us that allegorically and metaphorically, they believe it's a clear picture of the fall of Satan. To study your Bible. He said, you were the anointed cherub that covers. This is incredible to me because this is a description of the devil. And as I was reading this and studying this, it got so real to me when I defined the word anoint here. The word anoint here in Ezekiel 28, 14 is actually the word Memshak. You define the word Memshak. The Memshak anointing is the special grace and anointing given by God to bring expansion and the manifestation of miracles. The Lord spoke to me and he said, I, on this 30th anniversary, want to release in this house and over this preacher a brand new Memshak anointing for expansion and the manifestation of miracles. I hear the Lord say, Pastor Todd Hoskins, you have seen a lot, but you ain't seen nothing yet. I dare somebody who wants to walk in that anointing with your pastor, give the Lord a shout of praise right now. Y'all better, I, I'm, I'm going to let you sit down, but I dare somebody, if you really want that, give God a ridiculous praise right now and let him know. I, if it's available, I want it. If he'll pour it out, I got to have it. If it's available, pour it on me. Don't leave me. I want it. I want the manifestation of miracles and I want to take ground. What it is, Pastor Todd. It is a possess the land anointing. I've been walking in it. I ain't, I ain't bragging. Listen, if, if, if I'm bragging, I get the glory. But if I'm testifying, he gets the glory. Can I just tell you how God's been moving in my life and I'll get back and finish teaching this thing? In, in 2020, I made the declaration got up in the church, main building in Ormond, 3,000 seats. I got up there and said, 2020 is going to be the year of supernatural expansion. And then March came along. And COVID hit. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And all of a sudden, everything shut down. How many of that'll make your honey tight? You, you ever had your backside get tight? Come on, don't get religious on me. Where are the real people at? 
The preacher says something you don't like, you just draw right up. I'm like, Lord, what in the world? You led me to declare that this is the, the year of supernatural expansion. And there ain't even, we ain't even got people coming to the building. And I'm preaching online. The cameras. One night, one day I was up there preaching to a camera. And I'm looking at all these empty seats. And it just got me mad. I got mad at the devil. And I felt the Holy Ghost come on me. And I hollered right in that camera. And I said, when this is over, our revenge will be revival. Come on, somebody. I said, this is our revenge. Our revenge is revival. So here it is. We started out in 2020. Y'all ready for this? We were doing okay. But by the end of 2020, we had built a brand new kids center. Y'all can't rejoice. By the end of 2020, we had completely remodeled our foyer and everything in it. We built a brand new high school wing. Y'all, I rejoice by myself. I said we built a brand new high school wing. At the beginning of 2020, we had four campuses. Today we got eight. And we just opened a brand new youth center. And we just paid cash for a brand new campus in Palm Coast. I'm trying to tell you that when God is in it, there ain't nothing that can, COVID can't stop it. Devils can't stop it. Demons can't stop it. When it's God, it's going to come to pass. Somebody give God a shout if you're ready for that anointing. So, when I wrote this, Pastor, I'm sitting in my office, and it got so real to me. It got just alive in me. The Memshak anointing is a special grace given by God to bring expansion and the manifestation of miracles that possess the land anointing. It's the favor of God not just released over your pastor. How many of you know when God releases an anointing, he doesn't release it on a building. He doesn't release it on a pew. He releases it on a people. How many of you want it not just on your pastor, you want it yourself? So it's the favor of God released upon your life to receive the promises of God. When the Lord showed me this, I said, Lord, the warfare around this season has been unusual. Who would admit it? In the last 36 months, 2020 and all the drama we've been through, the warfare has been unusual. And the Lord said the reason the warfare has been the way it is and the devil's been fighting so hard, he said because there's territory attached to this warfare. He said my people are coming out with more than what they went in with. Who am I talking to? Is there anybody ready to walk out of this thing possessing every promise? Possessing the land, possessing more. It's the, it, it's, the, it's the anointing to expand and to possess. But, but here's the truth, y'all. 
This anointing is powerful. And maybe you feel like, Apostle, I feel like I've been retracting rather than expanding. Some of y'all, maybe you feel like you lost some ground, some opportunities, maybe even some folk. But here's the reality. I wrote this down. Often what we see as the losing of people are things God sees as the decluttering and preparation for who and what is next in your life. Some of y'all need to understand the reason that some people aren't with you anymore is because they could not go where you're going. They could not possess what you're going to possess. They could not expand with you. So God said, before I let them hold you back, I'll take them from you. Because some of y'all have been weeping and crying and carrying on. He don't even call me back anymore. She don't even text me no more. She doesn't like any of my posts anymore. Come on, somebody. I don't know about y'all, but I get sick and tired of Facebook. That's free for you. How many of y'all know Facebook never made the lame walk, but it certainly made the dumb talk? Can I get a witness in this house? That was free. Some of y'all sitting around worried about who ain't texting you, who left the church, who walked out. Let me tell you, instead of worrying about who left you and who walked out on you, when you get out of church tonight, drive to Walmart, get you a thank you card, stop by McDonald's, get some gift certificates, put it in the thank you card, and say thank you for leaving me because I never could have got to the next level if I'd have had to drag you every, some people had to go. You, you don't want them to miss heaven. But I dare you right now to give God praise for everybody he removed out of your life that would have kept you from a new season. See, some preachers won't preach to you like this because they're scared of you, but I ain't scared of none of y'all. Let me tell you what happened. Our church is doing better than it's ever done before, and I give God the praise. But when COVID was going on, I feel like the Holy Ghost came in and fumigated the building. Because there were some people there who didn't want to go to the next level. But now I got a church that says, Apostle, let's do it. God can do anything. Now watch this. The church the real church, must have the Mimshak anointing. If we're going to walk fully into our miracle releasing, possess the land next season, this is the church that's going to bring back Jesus. Yeah. Not a weak church. Not a broken church. Not a struggling church. But a church with power. And a church with abundance and joy. The Mimshak anointing was at work in the lives of the Old Testament, the prophets, the driving force behind the ever-expanding miracle ministry of Jesus. Everywhere Jesus went, he manifested the kingdom. Everywhere Jesus went, he grew, was powerful. But if I'm just being transparent with you, when I studied this thing, I said, Lord, I don't know. I, if the devil had that anointing, just give me one of the other ones. <laughs> and the Lord began to deal with me. Even today, the devil walks in a perverted version of that anointing. Because the Bible said the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. He said, whatever I give, I don't take it back. So the devil walks in a perverted version of that. How many of y'all know everything the devil does expands? If it's, if it's racism, it's expanding. If it's immorality, it's expanding. If it's lust, it's expanding. Even hell 
the Bible said it's ever expanding. It's getting, be, uh, it's getting bigger. The Bible said it's expanding. And the Lord said, you need to understand that if I will allow that sorry, rebellious, no good devil to walk in a perverted version of that, how much more do I want to release it over my blood-washed, sanctified, Holy Ghost-filled church? The question is, do you want it? If you want it, one, two, three, give God a shout. Come on, somebody. I said if you want it, give God a shout. Now, let's circle back, and I'm going to try to land this plane. That means I'm getting ready to close. You know what that means? That don't mean nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all give me two more minutes? Wave at me. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, four. I, I'm okay. Watch this. You were the anointed, the Memshak cherub who covers. I established you. It is the Hebrew word Nathan. It literally means I gave you permission. I dare you to tell everybody in your neighborhood, say, neighbor, I have. Permission. Daddy said, I can have it. Daddy said, yes. Huh. You know, at my house, we all have our roles. Come on, somebody. My wife makes her money, spends it like she wants to. I make my money, spend it like she wants to. Come on, somebody. You men look straight ahead and act like, yeah, act like it ain't true. But in our house, as my kids were growing up, I am the New Testament. My wife is the Old Testament. I am grace. She is the law. I'm the new covenant. Y'all ain't saying nothing. She's the old covenant. I'm the yes. She is the no. Have you lost your mind? Come on, somebody. And the reason I'm the way I am is because I grew up so poor. We weren't poor. We were po. Y'all know about po? That's P-O. That's when you can't even afford the last two letters. Come on. And all I ever heard was no. Can we go to Maine? No. Can we go to Burger King? No. Can we go to Disney World? No. Can I get in three musketeers? No. Can we go? No. Can no. No. I didn't get it out. Can I? No. So I made up my mind. When I get my shot, I'm saying yes. My kids know it. They groan and they know it. They don't go to their mama. They come to me. When my girls, just a couple years ago, still living at home, when I was moved out now, they like this fancy coffee. And they wanted a fancy coffee maker. And it was expensive. And they came to me. I don't drink that stuff. I drink Don Francisco's. 
in a can. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It tastes good, y'all. My girls like the fancy stuff. So they said, Dad, we will pay a third, a third, and you pay the other. Or you pay everything else, which was more like half. Come on, y'all. Now, I don't even drink the Cafe Mocha Shonda Kosata. I don't even drink it. Come on. I don't, I don't even drink the, the latte Camarón die. I don't even drink that stuff. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. I don't even know how to do I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I don't even drink it. But they said, Dad, will you buy this with us? You can have some of it. I said, yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. And their mom found out about it. And they came to their mom. And their mom said, we ain't buying that. that, that we're not buying that. We can't buy that. Your daddy don't even like that. We're not buying that. And they looked at her and they said, wait, mom. Daddy said yes. I dare you to tell everybody on your row, Daddy said yes. I dare you to tell everybody in your neighborhood, Daddy said yes. Can I have healing? Daddy said yes. Can I have revival? Daddy said yes. Can I have a new season? Daddy said yes. Can I have joy? Daddy said yes. Can I have victory? Somebody get your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor. Say you just stand there if you want to. But I need a minute to give God praise. Daddy said yes. I have permission. No, you better give God a shout of praise. So I came to Ohio to tell you, Pastor Todd Hoskins, Daddy said yes. All these dreams you have, Daddy said yes. All these hopes for the future you have, Daddy said yes. This is your night to walk in permission. This 30 years is only the beginning. God is about to unlock what you've never seen. God's about to do what you've never seen. Is there anybody ready to walk with your pastor into a memshack anointing? If you're ready, stand up and holler and give God a praise. Stand up. And I'm going to try to land this thing and then I want to pray it over you tonight. How many of y'all going to claim, come on musicians, how many of y'all going to claim everything I taught tonight? If you got anything out of the word, I want you to give God a praise right now. Only. I'm, post, I'm supposed to release this tonight. When I walked in the room, I heard the Holy Spirit say, this place, you can ask my assistant, I, I rarely can preach this message. We travel the nation. I'm somewhere almost every week. It's not real often that I can pull this out because only certain environments can handle a word like this. But when I stepped up in here, I felt this environment and I said to myself, Lord, I'm going to hear you. He said, release it in the room tonight. <laughs> when I wrote this and preached it at my church, I can't even describe to you what happened. There was such a glory that dropped into place that I don't even have words for it. I was so, we were so overwhelmed by this 
This Nathan, I have permission. Tell your neighbor, say, just call me Nathan. Just call me Nathan. That's the Hebrew word. It's actually Nathan. We brought people back to our church. Ooh, I feel it already. God's about to release something in this room. I feel like angels are in this place tonight. I feel like heaven is opening up. Even right now, there's a hole over this room. We were so overcome, I preached it to my church. And what preachers do, wise preachers, even when there's a storm, preachers preach through the storm. We preach people out of it and into where God's called them to be, even when we're fighting ourselves. It hit our house in a way that I can't even describe to you, and we, we said, we're coming back that night. We came back Sunday night, and I said, we're going to have a miracle service. Right over here, there was a lady with stage four cancer. Healed immediately. Went, went back. Went, went back to the doctor. Pastor Todd, completely gone. The doctor said, I, I can't even explain it. There was a lady over here with lupus. God healed her on the spot. She went home, started throwing up. Took her to the emergency room. They told her she had a virus. They tested her lupus, and her lupus was gone. It was like God said, I'm going to get you to the emergency room to show you that I healed you in that service. I mean, deaf ears popped open. It, I, I, it was a night of miracles. The Mem Shack expansion and the manifestation of miracles. Remember, I, I established you. Nathan, somebody say just call me Nathan. So while we were having this manifestation of the Memshack, yeah, and miracles, and signs, and wonders, the same thing hit our kids' center with hundreds of children. And there was this little boy. He's still with me. He was nine years old. And he came up to our kids' pastor and said, I feel like I'm supposed to lay hands on everybody here. A little boy. For some reason, Pastor Jennifer, a phenomenal kids' pastor, said, okay, we'll let you do it. This little boy started going through and laying hands on kids. They were out in the Holy Spirit. They were baptized. I said they were baptized, speaking in tongues. They were trembling. They were weeping. They were crying. The same glory that God in our building, God in our kids' church. This boy was laying hands on our workers, and they were under the power of God. It looked like a bomb had gone off in that place. Finally, they finished the service up. Pastor Jennifer said, I walked up to the little boy and said, man, that was powerful, son. She goes, what's your name? The little boy said, my name is Nathan. I'm trying to tell you that if God will give it to a nine-year-old little boy, wouldn't he give it to somebody in this house tonight? I